So I think we're in a very dangerous period. Yeah, yeah. I think the, 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 my sense of the ma period of maximum danger is the next 10 to 15 years. And the reason why I think this is the most dangerous period is that China is feeling its oats. Yeah. Um, but China is also aware of pending sharp limitations to its power that will come in the form of uh, its Gener uh, uh, its eventual or gradual transformation into what I'm going to call a normal economy. And a normal economy means not a big economy that grows 8, 10, 12 percent a year anymore, but rather an economy that grows 3, 4, in really, really good times, 5 percent a year. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe sometimes 1 or 2 percent a year. But that's where China is going to be one day or another, and probably sooner rather than later. Yeah. So there's an awareness of that. And there's an awareness that coupled with that, China is going to face a demographic crisis, or to be less dramatic, change or transition of a size and scope that has never been seen before in the world. And that this is going to bring immense social costs. By 2050, China will have 400 million people over the age of 65. And they have no immigration. 400 million people over the age of 65. Now, what happens to people who are over 65? Um, I'm not going to linger on that question. <laughs> uh, I lost both of my parents in the not so distant past. Um, you know, um, it's costly. It's dra it, it, it drags out. Um, it, uh, you know, uh, you think about the national scale. It imposes. We are a rich country, right? And we are in a constant battle with ourselves about how to take care of basic needs like this. China, after 40 years of very fast economic growth, is as wealthy on a per capita basis as Japan was in 1970. And it doesn't have a, a robust safety, social safety net at all yet. And this avalanche of aging is about to hit a, it. And with a per capita basis uh, GDP wealth like Japan in the 1970s, not like America today, or Japan, or, or Japan today, or Italy, or Finland, or some, Korea today, all of which are rich societies wrestling with questions of social costs and, 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 and pension and retirement and health care, et cetera. Uh, Japan with, uh, China with the wealth of Japan in 1970 on a scale never seen before in history is going to have to deal with all of this. And I think this means for the Chinese leadership, knowing that the economy is going to slow down, the aging of the population will become a, 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 um, a what do you call it? Um, I'm losing no, my economic terms. It's a, it's a magnifier of yeah, this, yeah. The, this pr effect, right? Um, <clears throat> that they have a moment of opportunity now. And that moment of opportunity, I think, is called the next 10 or 15 years. And that they should lock in as many gains as they can now, because they know that in 10 or 15 years, the bill is going to come due in a horrendous way and they will be constrained. Whatever they might wish to do, they're going to be constrained by the costs of this, this transition. 